welcome back to all the things i'm natalie um the other day i had a comment on a video that asked if i would do a freeze dryer video on how we do our milk and milk was on sale this week at kroger um their half gallons were on sale for a dollar 29 um half gallon with a limit of five and so i picked those up to put in the freeze dryer and so i'm just going to go ahead and show you that process today okay to get started for freeze drying our milk what we're going to do is come up here and press our start button this is the medium harvest right freeze dryer and normally i would have already taken my trays out and i would be putting whatever i was going to freeze dry on them for prep but with the milk i leave it in here because it's very difficult to carry a tray full of liquid and not spill it so i just pour the milk directly in here once it is ready for it and once it's done cooling um, and also we're going to need to close our drain valve right back here um, we need that to be closed so we'll just close that our freeze dryer is cooled and ready to start loading our milk and i know because i've done milk several times already i know that it is four cups of milk per tray on our medium harvest right which is a total of one gallon of milk um and i'm not going to measure it out into four cups i'm just going to pour half of each half gallon onto each tray um but all we're going to do is just open this up and like i said a minute ago i didn't i did not take these out and get my stuff on them ahead of time because it's so hard to carry a tray full of liquid so i'm just going to pour half of my milk into each of these trays and it's there we go there's one so I end up with one whole gallon there's that one So I have all four trays filled with my milk. And uh, let me move you so you can see this up here. We're just gonna shut this door and then we're gonna come up here and hit this continue button. I'm just gonna hit continue. And it'll start freezing it now. And then when it's done freezing, see all my milk in there. When it's done freezing, it will move into vacuum freeze and then it will move into a drying mode. And so we'll come back at the drying mode and get everything out. Okay, now that it's done freezing, it has moved to vacuum freezing and um, you can hear it's a little louder. That's because the pump is also now on and running. And over here where it tells us our time, we're at eight hours and 24 minutes, seven seconds. Um, I know that I was in here about 10 minutes ago and we were not at vacuum freezing. So in the last few minutes, within the last 10 minutes, we moved to vacuum freezing from freezing. So it took about eight hours for the freezing process of the milk. And let me see if I can wipe. Let's see. You can see the milk is frozen in there. And next, after that, it'll go into a drying mode. I wanted to show you as well this condensation. That's why we keep this um, towel right here at the bottom. Underneath the freeze dryer is just to catch any water that's dripping off of here. Um, so if you have a freeze dryer, just put your little hand towel right there and it'll catch whatever condensation comes off of this as stuff um, as the freeze dryer goes through its process in there. I just wanted to show you all that we are in the drying process. We have been for 15, um, 15 hours and 23 minutes and our total time right up here so far on this milk is 24 hours 
Um, that's normal. Milk takes a long time. Being liquid, it, it just takes a while to, to freeze dry. But I promise you it's worth it. And you can kind of see in there that it's kind of starting to... I don't know if you can see very well. Um, I'm trying to show the best I can, but you'll be able to see it well when I get it out of here. But it is drying and starting to kind of flake up. Our milk is done freeze drying and we are I have mine set for nine extra hours of dry time in case it finishes during the middle of the night it gives me time so it's been done for about 15 minutes or so but our total time up here is 30 well pretty much 31 hours 30 hours and 59 minutes at this point so um, that's how long it took and all I'm gonna do is I'm going to well I'm going to take my towel, I'm going to wipe my condensation from my door, that way that doesn't drip onto my trays when I'm pulling them out, but we'll get them pulled out and we'll get them packaged up. To get um, the door open we have to do our, we have to release the pressure, so we're just going to, I just do it slowly, I just do it a little bit. And then after it gets um, some of the air out, I go ahead and do it the rest of the way. And you can hear that it's releasing all that pressure so that we're able to open the door. And then there's our mouth. You see all the ice build up? That's what we're going to leave our drain valve open that we just opened to let all of that defrost out of there. And, um, then that will drain down into a bucket below. We'll just get our trays out, go make sure everything is dry, and then if we find that everything is dry, then I'll come in here and I'll hit defrost. If not, we can put them back in for some more dry time. I felt all of my trays, they are dry, so we're just gonna hit defrost and then it will i do have my drain valve open and the door is closed and my product is out so now it will go ahead and defrost all that ice will come down through that tube there and then it'll go down into this bucket down here Okay, I've got one of my trays here of my freeze-dried milk and I have a quart mason jar um, I we did two we did a gallon of milk we did um, two half gallons and we did them we broke them down into half on each tray so each tray is a quart so I'm gonna put all of my milk from each tray into one of these each and then with milk, it's volume for volume. So after I get all my powder in here, I'm gonna store it, but when I'm ready to reconstitute it, I'll just fill it with water. And that's how I know how much milk this is. Um, you can definitely also put these in a uh, Mylar bag. I just like the mason jar because that way I can pour my water right into the jar to, to do my milk again. And all I'm gonna do is I've got a spatula and I'm going to um, scoop this into here and I'm just using like a canning funnel. Um, but you can see how it is very just soft and flaky. And it's just taking out all of that um, moisture and it's just it's just broken it all down. We've also done buttermilk. Buttermilk turned out really good. We've done um, eggs. Eggs turned out good. They turn out 
flaky. Buttermilk and eggs are kind of the same texture when you get done with them. Now what I usually do is, I still have some milk to get on there, but I'll usually just take um, something, you know, with a, with a handle and just push that down in there so that all my milk will fit. You can crush your powder before you put it in the jar. I just found that it's easier to do it this way. That I crushed it the first time we did it and I was like, well, I'm not doing that again because it really does make a mess. Um, so it's a little easier just to do it like this and then push it down into the jar with, with a utensil or something like that. tray. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the lid on here, but I'm just going to set it on here. We're going to put some oxygen absorbers in these in just a minute, but for right this second, um, I'm just going to put a lid on it to just protect it while we're doing that. And I'm going to wait till I get them all filled and then open my package of oxygen absorbers at the end. So I'm ready to use them all at the same time. So I'm just going to repeat that with my last four, with my other three trays for the milk. Okay, I've got my oxygen absorbers here, and you can just buy these on Amazon or wherever. Lots of places sell them. These particular ones are 400 cc. They come in different cc. Um, I don't need two of these per jar, but I'm going to put two of them per jar just because um, I just I always just do extra. But that's it. That's it. That's how easy it is. I'm just drop them in there, close the lid, and it's done. It's ready to go. Um, I'll label it. I am going to leave one of these jars without any in it because I'm just going to go ahead and um, reconstitute it, and then I will. Uh, no, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put them all in these jars and I'm going to get one out of the pantry that's older for us to reconstitute the milk in uh, because I want you to see how fresh it tastes even from one that's been done for several months instead of one that we just did. So I am going to put my oxygen absorbers in these two and um, I'll go get two more for this last one and then we'll do another, we'll do an older jar to reconstitute and give you a taste test with. I've got all of my milk labeled. I'm going to go put it in the pantry, um, but that's how easy it is. And then I'm going to get one out from the pantry and go ahead and show you what we're going to do to reconstitute it. Okay, I got one out of the cabinet that um, uh, we did this one July the 7th. I've got some older ones and some other storage, but I don't feel like going out there to get them. So um, this one's a month and a half old. So I'm going to open it up and we'll just pull out our oxygen absorbers and all I'm going to do is fill it with water which I'm making a huge mess with and pouring all over mine You get some more water because poured half of it on this. Okay, now. I'm gonna give it a good shake. Now, I'm just going to put it in the refrigerator and I'm going to let it um, get cold overnight tonight and tomorrow we'll pull it out and it won't take that long for it to um, reconstitute. It'll reconstitute in probably the next 15 or 20 minutes, um, but I want it to be cold because I don't like to drink hot milk, uh, just personal preference. So I'll put it in the fridge and we'll try it tomorrow. And I might even get out some regular milk and see if Jamie can tell us which one is freeze dried and which one is not. We'll see. 
he might be able to tell i don't know but we'll see if he can um the taste is the same it's the texture uh, which is not a bad texture at all. It's still very much like milk. It's just a tiny slight difference than um, regular milk, but it's the taste is no different at all than regular milk. Okay, we'll put it in the fridge and we'll come back tomorrow. Okay, here's our milk. Here's our the milk that we um, reconstituted and then regular milk. And what I did is this is freeze dried here in the black and this one's not in the orange this is the regular milk and then these two glasses the tall glasses are going to be regular milk these two are the freeze dried right here and i did chocolate milk just white milk and then a little bowl of cereal with each one and then we're going to go in there and see if jamie can tell us the difference or not and also um what he thinks of the flavor of everything. Okay, I'm here, I've got Jamie, I've got all of our stuff on the table, and I already told y'all what's what, but we'll see if he can tell. Just start with uh, plain white milk. And I'm supposed to tell you which one is the... You're supposed to taste them. Tell me if you can tell which one's freeze dried, and then tell me, if you can tell, why you can tell if it's the taste, the texture, the look, what, what gave it away, if it even does. All right, by the looks, I'm gonna say this is the just regular milk because this one has like a, a film on top, kind of like, okay. not like bad, but. Tastes exactly the same. No difference. Tastes exactly the same. Okay. But you think that the, that one is the freeze dried? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to tell you whether it is or not yet. We'll wait till the end and tell you whether you're right. All right. So we're going to do chocolate milk next. Again, the. I'm gonna say the freeze dried one has like a uh, film. Probably a bad word to use. That probably sounds pretty gross, but he's right here. I mean, it's I don't know. Tastes exactly the same. Okay, which one do you think is freeze dried? These. You still think that's the one that's freeze dried? Yes. Okay. All right, and now we're gonna do just a little bowl of cereal. The smallest bowls that I have were these little Halloween bowls, so we're using them. I say this one is freeze dried one. What makes you think that? Because if you bring the camera in, it's got like a little film around the the ring. That's the only reason I think that. And this one doesn't. That's the only reason I think that. I mean, it tastes exactly the same. See, kind of, kind of cloudy is I guess a better better word to say maybe because it's not thick it's not i can't once i start drinking it it doesn't taste any different it's not like you know i'm not does it feel any different no. in your mouth like is there a texture to it no not at all so if i blindfolded you do you think you would have been able to get the you got them all correct you did but if you had on a blindfold would you have still known or you think it was only the way that it looked that that was, you knew. It was only the way it looked. 
So the taste and the texture was not. Yeah, if you, that's probably what we should have done blindfold because if that was the case, I would have never guessed it. Okay. Well, I've had the freeze dried milk before and I think it tastes exactly the same as regular milk. Um, I, I don't. I don't don't have a problem drinking it at all. I think it's I think it's fine. If you like these videos, we hope you'll stick around and subscribe. We thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.